Hello everybody, Gurmies Coast Yard here with another episode of Germinator Studios. And in today's episode, we are doing a variety of things, including building a warehouse and uh, finishing up some, or putting some finishing touches on our spooky area, as well as building a gateway between the spooky area and the colonial area, which we will build next. Um, and we also re imagine we revisit one of our transportation lines uh, which you'll see how we approach that in a little bit but to start we are fixing the back end of our medieval village buildings um, to make them better fit uh, the area basically they were still visible from the main pathway so I decided to make them as they were on the front sides again however because the very bottoms are not visible, I decided to put in the colored walls and some garage doors um, that could act act as a, you know, just like loading areas, I guess, for uh, inventory. So you can see me doing that here, and uh, you'll see I put the uh, colored walls, the slate walls, on the outer edge, and to make sure there wasn't a lip between them and the wood base um, of the porch pieces. I just put a wood, a one-third height wooden wall above those, so it helps it blend in quite nicely. And now we are getting started on our warehouse. So any successful amusement park or theme park uh, relies on warehouses in order to uh, maintain inventory of merchandise or maybe um, prizes for the games or even food and beverage, of course, that's the most important one. Um, whatever this warehouse is containing, I, it's, I don't really know. Um, I just put barrel pieces in it in the end. Um, but the idea here is just that you would have an on-site warehouse for whatever supplies you may want or need. Even things, um, like park services equipment, like, uh, toilet paper and paper towels for the restrooms. Even those have to be stored in a warehouse somewhere in an amusement park. So, um... It could be anything in here, or in it, in whatever warehouse you build. Um, but I wanted one within the park itself, just a smaller one, and we will be eventually build a bigger one off-site, somewhere near the resort complex, um, or I should say the hotel complex. Nevertheless, um, on the inside, you can see I built a little office space there. Um, it's not uncommon for retail, or um, sorry, warehouses to have some sort of office space within them, and uh, or attached to them. So that's what I did there, and of course you can see I put the little stairway up to the top and um, the railing along the side so even more storage could be included up on top of that. So uh, of course it's important with warehouses that you maximize your storage, pay, storage space, that's what we attempted to do. And uh, as you've seen me do with garage doors before, you can see I built the wall with the garage on the outer edge, and on the inner edge we put the... Um, gray colored western wall piece one third height um, uh, up there on the other side and we have this as an open garage door um, not that it matters you can build a closed one if you want now one thing I was trying to do here was build a loading ramp up to this garage door so that way like a big semi truck could get up to the door and uh, I don't know how to explain it but you've probably seen them if you're familiar with uh, warehouses However, um, I ended up getting rid of the ramp because it just wasn't working and I realized that it was right in the middle of the path to the sliding doors that go onto the main midway. And I also realized that um, a warehouse and like the warehouse we're building here probably wouldn't have big semis coming up to it. It would probably just have um, smaller trucks with smaller shipments that are coming from the main warehouse. Um, so no sense in trying to get big semi trucks in here or big trailers in here um, but they would certainly have some tricky navigation um, in that little area of road in that little roadway essentially um, so here you can see me getting rid of that and uh, which I think is fine in the end um, but we will when I uh, build our whichever warehouse we end up building outside of the park or however many we end up building um, I will try to remember to include more of a proper, uh, properly designed loading ramp, and one that works. Anyhow, uh, what good would a warehouse be without storage space? So along here, 
you can see me um, adding in some shelving units. And uh, of course, one building tip, it, this probably goes without saying, but uh, you can see I'm deleting roof pieces here for better access. No sense in giving myself a headache trying to squeeze the camera around in there, especially one like the RCT3 free cam, which can be a bit of a headache at times. Um, so instead of dealing with that, I just deleted some roof pieces temporarily to access the inside. Uh, but it looked a little bit empty, so I went to the western scenery pieces, and I was going to put these little pickaxe and shovel pieces around there, because they have the little crates and everything, but they weren't quite fitting, so I ended up putting the barrels in instead. Um, so this could probably be interpreted as a food and beverage warehouse or something, um, because there are barrels, um, but it, uh, I mean, it could be anything, and that's just the one piece I found that seemed to fit well. One thing I did is I started sort of stocking it up to the very top and then I thought well that's not entirely realistic so maybe I'll just have one barrel st stacked at a time and then I deleted some to make it look like uh, some of them have been taken. So that's sort of what I did for that. I'm not entirely sure if I like this. I may go through and stack them too high or realistically I'll probably just leave it because uh, it um, yeah it's this is such a small, minute detail that's off to the side. I don't know if it matters that much. Um, getting it perfectly right. Uh, but in general, uh, these are just techniques to sort of make it kind of like an Easter egg and just something to make it look nice on the inside. Uh, and yeah, I guess there's no need to continue rambling about that, especially because the scene is about to change. So here, short clip of me um, adding some more foliage along uh, in between our lake and our spooky area and uh, I just went through with some of the different shrubs and everything from the spooky scenery set and then along the back side of our little uh, gift shop here I put a pathway in so there could be access for employees and uh, and then here I'm just putting in a little curb or a lip along the edge of that just to account for any terrain variations that might happen. And I started to put a railing in but I realized uh, well I, I realized the railing is not entirely necessary um, because there's not really any immediate danger of employees falling in the lake or anything and um, railings in, the, in this sort of space are better suited for keeping guests out but because guests are not going to be back on that little pathway I figured I don't need railings all along the back, just a couple along the main pathway to keep the guests where they need to be. And here is a, a, a clip, a short clip, and a too short clip, I should say, of me starting the, um, the gateway between our two worlds, our two lands. However, <clears throat> for whatever reason, the clip got cut off, as you can see in the little editor's note there. So um, I will include a little bit of a showcase on the final design in the end, and you'll see it coming up a little bit in future shots as well, but we'll do a proper showcase of it at the end of the video. Uh, in the meantime, here's me sort of getting a start, laying out the paths for our colonial world, or just sort of mapping out where I, where I think I want them to go. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I want to approach this road yet, um, but along here with the concrete, you can see me mapping out another access point for our access road. And yeah, that's all we do with that. So here I'm doing some more work behind the scenes. Um, the little overhang or the little supports we built for our monorail in the previous episode, we're just up adjusting those one tile up so that way vehicles can fit through. If you might, if you remember, I tried putting a... Uh, the one of the bus scenery pieces under there as my reference point and the top was clipping into the top of the uh, structure so now we are making that structure uh, one third height taller and that will be enough room for those buses and those are the tallest vehicle in the game which is why I sort of use those as my benchmark or my baseline for measuring vehicular clearance especially in behind the scenes areas. And along here we are working on our planters along the main pathway that leads to the entrance of our park. So as you can see um, 
it's just the standard design that I have always done. And you can see the space on the left is still empty. So I think I want to make this sort of like something similar to the Universal Studios City Walk in that there will be like restaurants or gift shops or just a, sort of a public area for uh, commerce to happen. Um, and I know for sure uh, I want to have like a visitor center and that may be the only thing I end up building along there. Um, but just something to liven up that area and make it a little more interactive uh, than just um, just a long walk essentially to the main entrance. Granted, we also have the little shuttle lines for people who don't want to walk. Um, however, if people do want to walk, uh, we might as well give them a reason or give that path a reason to be used, if that makes sense. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going along that edge and just putting in planters and trees just to fill out the space um, until we decide what to do with it, if we end up doing something with it, which I would really like to. Anyhow, coming up next, we are doing something. Ah, yes, I put some cars in. Uh, just have a little parking area for employees behind the scenes. And I went with the one-third height slate wall, colored it white, and sunk it into the ground here to make little uh, parking lines. So that way people know where they can and cannot park. And I thought that turned out pretty nicely. And then just put a little yellow spot there to indicate that no one could park there. Maybe that would be a handicapped spot or something. Um, nevertheless, and then we did some more of those in the parking spot by our theater on the other side of the park. Okay, and now along here, we are, so we were trying to figure out how to put an exit, because I realized I didn't have an exit ramp on uh, this part of the uh, little tram system to our transport hub from the front of the park. So I, uh, what did I do? Goodness, I can't keep my thoughts straight tonight. Anyhow, um, so yeah, I was trying to figure out where to put an exit ramp in, and I couldn't figure out how to fit one. So I ended up putting it on the opposite end. Um, and yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to figure out, but I did figure out figure it out eventually, and it worked out. So patched up the wall there, and then I started building a platform along the underside of our, our little tram system. And. Uh, what I'm doing here, if I didn't mention it, I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, uh, but we are essentially making it similar to the People Mover at in Tomorrowland at Magic Kingdom in Florida, uh, and I think there's one at Disneyland in California, but I am not sure as I've never been there. Anyhow, so we were building a People Mover, um, and it's still the tram like normal. You don't, it's not like the actual People Mover because that's more of just. A ride and it's not an actual um, it's not an actual transportation system uh, in a practical sense at the Disney parks um, so but here it is and uh, yeah basically we're just making taking what we have and making it look nice it, that's essentially what we're doing um, so building a nice little platform for the station as well as, ah oh yes, along here, I'm using our good old copy-paste custom structure technique uh, to make a support that'll go all along the base of it. And I did not realize how long this thing was until I started placing various pieces. And uh, I spent admittedly longer than I should have on some things where I should have copy-pasted from the get-go. Uh, but it's a learning experience nonetheless. So, like right here, I went by, I went down both sides 
and pay, place these uh, scaffolding pieces one by one from front to back and then back to front. Um, and it was, I mean, it, it wasn't awful or anything because it, it's pretty easy work. But uh, if you want to save yourself the headache and uh, the monotony of it, definitely copy and paste it. And that's what I ended up doing for the roof. So that, in the end, ended up working out, as you will see. But yes, so this is, I mean, it's pretty clear how it's inspired, I guess, by the people mover at Disney World, if you're familiar with that ride. If not, uh, you can look it up and you'll see what I mean. Um, but just the nicer, uh, you know, elevated track. It, in a way, it almost reminds me of the monorail. and that's, It's an elevated track, um, but kind of completely different systems and uh, on a much different scale. Anyhow, there's about to be a scene change. I wonder what it's going to be. And, ah, uh, yes. I could not have guessed. So this is the one where we start the roof. Um, no, it's not. I put a little put put a little support in there, and the roof would not go to the proper level. So I had to put one third height walls in on top of our scaffolds, but that is okay because I think that worked for the best. And you can see I saved the line of four of those on either side as a custom scenery piece. And you'll see in a moment I start to place those. But then I realized, wait a minute, what am I doing placing these when I could put the roof on them? Because I'm going to have to put the roof on them anyway. So I went over and added the roof to our original little structure. And I saved it as a new piece. Actually, I saved it over the original piece and finished it the rest of the way with our piece. And, and saving even just as a line of four, it saved a lot of time um, doing that for... You know what I'm saying. Uh, so even though I didn't copy and paste it as like a line of 10 or 20 or something, um, even just as four, it saved quite a bit of time. And here you can see me recoloring the train to make it look a little nicer. And you may notice these are this is sort of a variation of the uh, Germinator Studios color scheme uh, that we've chosen, the white and blue. Now this is more of a white and navy color whereas the other color scheme is a light blue. And I may change this, um, I don't know yet, but just for the time being, I thought it looked nice. And uh, I think the I think white and blue is also the color of the uh, Tomorrowland People Movers, so maybe there was some subconscious, uh, um, what do you call it, inspiration there. I don't know. Nevertheless, we're putting a roof over the station now, and... I realized I also needed that one-third height separation um, in, on this roof. So, But the issue is that we don't have curved walls that are one-third height. Um, you can see I used curved walls. We have full height curved wall pieces for the colored wall set. Um, but I didn't want to have a weird thin edge on the corners. And the roof, like, you'll, you'll see what I mean. I didn't, I, well, I don't know how to explain it. Nevertheless, um, we end up getting rid of the rounded corners in the end. Uh, we leave the rounded platform corners just on the roof. It'll be as straight edges, and uh, I have no issues with that. Um, anyhow, and there's another curved wall piece. Ugh, I just have a minute left with this. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, putting in a little bit of some uh, railings there just to keep guests from going over the edge because there is no curved fence piece either for me to use so and yeah you can see there where we got rid of the uh, curved roof pieces and here I'm extending our roof over the main track uh, by one block and after some finishing touches uh, it's just a little bit of a POV shot here, I guess. And... Okay, that's everything. And here is the finished uh, gateway between the spooky section and the colonial section. Uh, so you can see on one side we use the western wall pieces just to continue the aesthetic and the theme of the spooky section. And on here we did the uh, colonial wall set with the little pillars going down. And yeah! One last shot 
of our people mover. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.